Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to the Checker Games tutorial, the multiplayer Checker Games tutorial. Today, um, talking about multiplayer, we are going to actually just start laying down our server. So we have a big script with a lot of server stuff in it. However, we can't really test it out just yet because we don't have any client. But don't worry about that too much. In like two or three episodes, we're going to have a server and a client running at the same time. So guys, without further ado, let's get right into it. Alright, so it's finally the time to start laying down the server, so I am going to go ahead and just um, create a new sharp, C Sharp script. This one is going to be the server itself and most of the operation is going to be done in there. A little bit later on we'll also introduce the client, which is something uh, everybody's going to have in the end. Um, but the server, only one person is going to have it on his machine, it's going to be a host. So when the host decides to actually host the game, he's going to create an instance of the server class and he's the only one that's going to have it. So, um, to get started, we need a few information here, and I'll just start with the public int port, which, as you probably guessed, is going to be which port the game is going to be played on. So, you know, you connect using a host, so you're connecting to, say, a, a specific IP address, and then you have to define which port are you going to be using on that IP address. This cannot be something like 80, because 80 is the HTTP port. Uh, this can't be anything else, you know, anything that another process would be using. It has to be an open port. So usually I just like to give it uh, a value like this, 6321, that's that's open, I'm sure it's open. Nothing really happens on that port ever, so... <laughs> um, I'm going to put that on 6321, but in case we actually need to change it later on, uh, it's public so we can manually modify it via the inspector. Okay, so um, the next thing a server actually needs is some kind of definition of um, the client he gets. So down here, not in the same class, I'll create another class that I'll call server client. This is pretty similar to the one we've did with the chat server. And down here, I will define a few fields. So public string client name, that'd be good to know its name. A public TCP client, TCP, and that is going to be its socket. And uh, since we don't really have this right now, we need to include the namespace. The namespace is system.net.sockets, which is right here. And then I'll finally create a constructor, so public server client that will take in a TCP client, TCP, and when we actually create that client, we're going to say this.tcp is equal to the one we get in parameter. Okay, so right now we have a basic definition of what is a server client. Um, we're going to go up here in our server, back in the server now, we're going to declare a list of that. So a private list, and again, we need to include system.collection.generics, so right here. A private list of system client, not sorry, not system, but server client, that I'm simply going to call client with an S. We'll declare another one for the disconnection list. Again, this is really similar to what we've done um, with the chat server. So we have a list of client, a list of client to disconnect if um, if we have to disconnect any, right? So next step. I'll need a TCP listener, and that is going to be the server itself. So this is where you know most of the operation happens. And then after that, I'll declare a boolean, just knowing if the server is started or not. And that's going to be pretty much all we need for now. Now we need to jump into the big function. Uh, and the big function, I think I'm going to make them uh, public right here. So public void in it. I'm not going to be using the start here. Um, I'd rather be able to call this manually. A little bit later on you'll see why but I don't want to be using the start here so I'll just make a public function in it and I'll call it when I create my server. We'll start by something really simple so don't destroy unload. We don't want to destroy the server if we're just changing scene you know we need to change scene because what we're going to have in our flow at the end is you have the menu scene if you decide to host this is where you create the server but you're still in the menu scene waiting for another player to connect. Once you're both connected, you move on to the game scene. So you, you don't really, you can't really destroy the server while you have that transition going, which is why I do a don't destroy on load. The next thing I'll do is I'll just um, instantiate those lists so we don't get any null reference error. And then we'll try to actually start the server. So let's do a try and also catch within an exception. So catch exception which we'll need uh, to add, I think, system. So using 
system up here and exception E okay so that's going to work if we catch an exception let's just uh, let's just go ahead and write it down so debug.log socket error plus e dot messages okay so if we are trying to connect uh, there's a few things to do actually so we have to do server is equal to a new TCP listener first so we just instantiate that object here now in terms of what we shoot to the constructor um, it needs to know who am I accepting connection from and we're going to say IP address dot any which is going to just mean that everybody can connect to actually have access to this one, you have to do a using system.net. So IP address dot any, and the port we're connecting on is simply going to be the one we define at the very top here, so 6321. So we accept connection from pretty much anywhere as long as they're connected on 6321. And then once we're done, we just start. So server dot start. At this point, we need to start listening for incoming connection. And um, just like we've done, in the chat server, we are going to have a function that takes care of doing that because we need to call it multiple time. It is going to be a private void start listening just like this. Okay, so when you start listening, you might have some incoming connection and then you have to accept them. Um, we are going to actually try to accept them here by doing a server begin accept TCP client. And at this point, we have to shoot a callback for whenever you know you're done accepting that client, you're actually just the handshake is being done and uh, it's been accept. So we're going to have to create another function that will create accept TCP client. And just hold on to this for a second. The second parameter is going to be server. So going to grab this guy now, private void accept TCP client. And this one takes in a I async result, which is going to be, uh, we're just going to call that AR. Okay, so we'll go over this like. Um, again in a second once we're done with that function. So assume that we did receive a client, we managed to have the handshake going on, the connection is, you know, it's live now. Um, let's go ahead and just assign some values so we can actually remember who that person is. We'll start with a TCP listener. Listener um, is equal to ar.async state that we have to cast as a listener. Like this. Once we grab the listener, we're going to create a definition for that, that very person. So we'll do a server client that I'll just call um, SC in this case is equal to a new server client, listener dot and accept TCP client. We shoot the AR again. And then um, after that, nothing really. And that is pretty much it for the server client. So we've created our server client. Let's go ahead and just add it to the list now. Um, do we have a list? Yes, we do. Clients dot add and we add SC. That's pretty much all we need to do at this point. We can also add a debug.log here just to keep track that uh, somebody just connected just for debugging purpose, then we're gonna remove it eventually. So let's just say somebody has connected. We still don't know who that person is because we have to do another communication in between the server and client before uh, we actually just go ahead and just ask that person name. So basically what happens is the server is started, it's actually listening for any connection on 6321. And uh, once it gets one, it starts this function and begins to accept the TCP client, which does the handshake. And when that handshake is over and the client has been accepted, this is where we just grab its listener and then we store it inside our definition of a client. We add it to our own list and then we just start listening again. So this is something we have to do. So. Um, Oh, however, here we don't really start listening at any time, so let's just put that here. So once we're done starting the client, um, we start listening for connection. Now one of the big deal with this connection here is that uh, when we start listening for a client, and then we accept it, the server actually forgets to uh, listen again, to go back to actually grabbing messages from other people. So this is something you have to redefine uh, when you're done adding the uh, TCP client to our list. So here we do a start listening again. So then it goes back to actually grabbing other people's connection and um, you know adding them to the list if they do connect. Okay, so at this point, we have people that might be able to connect. We keep a definition of their listener, but that's really all we have at this point. 
but it's actually missing an update loop. So right now we just, you know, we, we connect, we start our server, we start listening, and um, that function down here, the begin accept TCP client callback, it's actually, is going to be called when somebody else connects. So we're, we're, you know, we're plugged in a listener, but we're not really processing messages. Well, right now we're not really getting any messages, but later on when the client talks to the actual server, like real communication, um, he's not really able to process that information just yet because we're not running any update loop. We're not constantly checking if there is something to be processed. So we'll actually go down here, just below the init, and we'll do a private void update. Now the update is going to work because we're on mono behavior, but just remember that if you don't, if you want to put your server on um, on something else, so say I don't know, a Linux build or something, then remove the mono behavior and just run a um, run loop for your update at all time on a different thread. So in the update, we're going to start with something simple. If the server is not started, let's go ahead and just return. We don't need to do anything at this point. The next thing we're going to do is um, we're going to run a for each loop on every single client we have. So for each server client, I'll just call uh, let's just call it C in clients. Then let's check: is the client still connected? Now, just like we've done with the uh, the chat server, what I had is another function that would take care of that. So it was somewhere around here, a private boolean, or actually, you know what? That's very bad function placement. Now let's put it down here. Private boolean is connected. It would take in a TCP listener. So uh, is it TCP listener or is it the TCP client? It's actually the TCP client. My bad. So TCP client C. And down here, we would actually do something like a try catch. So, so try and check if the uh, client is connected. If we're not able to get any response from our actual attempt to know if the the, if the client was uh, connected or not, we're just gonna say he's disconnected. As simple as that. Okay, and this part here, I kind of grabbed it uh, from my friend that does server. So not really sure what it does, but. Just bear with me. So if this if the client isn't null and if C dot client isn't null and C dot client connected. This one is quite simple. So you know if, if we're able to find all of these guys and we are defined as connected, then there is this line that I don't really understand. If you guys know, just just go ahead and leave a message. I'd be grateful to know what this means. Um select mode select read okay and then here's a line another line that confused me quite a lot but uh, yeah so basically we check if we are connected or not using these calls here and we're pretty much done here with the return true Oh, and also, um, if we can't find a definition for C, if we can't find a definition for C the client, or we're not connected, else false. So return false, and that would be the is connected function. Now I'm going to take this, go back to where we were in our loop, and um, check if everybody is connected. So if is not connected, so we're going to put the exclamation mark right in front of it. If we're not connected, let's go ahead and just close the socket like this and add this to the disconnect list. All right, once we're done with that, we do a continue so it doesn't run anything else we put in the loop, but it starts with the other client. Okay, let's just assume that we are connected. If we are connected, this is where we actually check the stream of every single client we have. So we check for the TCP stream if they wrote something on it. So network stream, s is equal to c.tcp get stream. Now let's check if s.data available, if there is data, then we are going to create a stream reader. Now stream reader is going to be part of the of the uh, system.io, so just make sure you include that if you're using stream reader. I will in this case, and I'll just create it on the fly. So stream reader s and through. Our data is going to be stored in here, so reader.readline. 
uh, we only have to read one line because whenever we're, we're going to write, we're simply going to write, you know, one line, everything in a single line. Whether that line would be like 2,000 character long doesn't really matter because we'll be um, using our own decoding type, kind of. Okay, and if that data is not equal to null, now if there is data, we are going to parse it using our very own uh, function on incoming data, we're going to send who actually sending that message and then the message itself. Right. So on incoming data doesn't really exist just yet. We are going to create it right now. Let's put it somewhere, say, um, right here. Why not? Private void on incoming data. It takes in the TCP client C and the string data. Now this one is going to be quite fun to play around with and you're going to see what um, what I mean a little bit later on when we start actually parsing our data. But right now since we don't really you know, have any kind of knowledge of what kind of message we'll get, we'll simply do a debug.log and write down what we receive. Oh my bad here, we're not actually sending a TCP client, we're, uh, we're actually sending a uh, server client because that is the definition of C here. Plus by sending a, uh, the server client our own definition, then we can access the TCP client by, by actually just saying um, c.tcp, that's going to give you the TCP client. But we'd rather have the definition of server client because then we have access to more than just that, just like the client name. We could say um, c.client name, then plus those two dots. So we can actually simulate like, uh, say Dave, two dots is sending that data. Okay, so that sounds to be, uh, that sounds all really cool, but we can't really make it work just yet because we need both a server and a client and we need to have like some kind of architecture in Unity. So, um, okay, so now right now the last part we'll do uh, for today is we're just going to write down the disconnection loop in our update. So at the very end of the full H, if we have people to disconnect, we are going to disconnect them. And then afterward, we need to go work on actually implementing that in the game. We've wrote a lot of code, but we haven't really tested it out. And it's really hard to just test out a server by itself. You need, you know, you need some kind of client as well to go with this. So um, this is what we're going to do in the next episode. But for right now, we are going to write our disconnection loop. So after the for each, we're going to be doing a for, another for loop. But this one is not going to be a for each since um, we're going to be removing stuff from that. And you can't really run a for each on a list that uh, you remove stuff from because that's just that mess up the enumerator and you're going to get an error and not really going to be fun at all. So what you're going to be doing here is uh, a for int i is equal to zero as long as long as i is smaller than the list count minus one i plus plus. So you can actually iterate through that list. Now um, we actually need to remove client from here. So let's do a clients dot remove remove add disconnect list index i. So that's going to remove it from the list of client. And let's also remove it from the disconnection list as well. So remove at i. Now the whole point of having a disconnection list is so that we can eventually tell our player, so tell our player somebody has disconnected. Plus we get to know which one has disconnected because you know this is the definition of a client. Um, we don't really have anything to tell our player this thing just yet. I mean, we don't really have any messages we can send to our player. So we're just going to leave that comment here for now. And eventually, once we do have something to communicate with them, we are going to just put the message here and say that uh, somebody has disconnected. And that will pretty much conclude it for now, guys. I'm sorry we can't really test it out. That's just how the server is right now. Uh, in the next one, though, we are going to just play stuff around, just create our scenes, our menu scenes where we're going to be hosting and also defining what a client is. And we're going to be doing that next episode. So uh, thanks a lot for tuning in. I hope you learned something. And if you did, please just leave me a like. Really appreciate that. Uh, also check out the Patreon page. Support me there. You can also help out by leaving comments, just sharing this with other people that want to learn. And, uh, you know, stuff like that, that uh, help me make more tutorial and more courses. So thanks a lot for watching again. Subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one.